There's far too much going on with Nightingale to try to cover it all within a compressed 10 minute review, so I won't, but I will try to pull the curtain back on a few core aspects, like the gameplay loop and overall setting. Welcome to the channel, I am Lieutenant Buzz Lightbeer, and 2024 is proving to be a veritable buffet for fans of survival games, with Nightingale and its alternative take on the survival formula proving to be a bit of a shock to the system. And it's not exactly what you would expect from a team of ex-Bioware devs who were in on past titles like Knights of the Old Republic, Mass Effect, and even Dragon Age. But what they've cooked up here with Nightingale is a unique stance on the survival crafting arena. Thank you to Inflection Games for sponsoring this video, and links to the game's official site and Steam page can be found in the video description. Now, let's dive into the beautiful and mysterious world of Nightingale. The overall vibe and setting for Nightingale is quite similar to our own, but it uses this wild mix of Victorian steampunk overlaid with nightmarish fey influence to give it a truly unique aesthetic. Set nearly 300 years after the magical beings of the Fae first appeared and shared their knowledge of magic with humans, forever altering and shaping the path of humanity, we are then thrust into this world of chaos, forever seeking out the magical city of Nightingale, which was lost many years prior. A crippling blight has descended on this world known as the Pale, freezing everything forever into a state of suspended animation, and throughout a brief prologue, you learn of its far-reaching effects and the only remaining bastion of humanity, Nightingale. And here's where your adventure begins, because these magical doorways, think of them like stargates, gaining you the ability to travel to Nightingale, have been thrown into disarray, scattering the remaining realm walkers to the far corners of the Fey Realms. Give me your hands, that we may be friends, and I shall restore amends. Enter Puck, one of the remaining magical fae who serves as your tour guide throughout the game, tasking you with gaining knowledge and rewarding your advances when achieved. Puck isn't this constant voice of endless chatter forever spouting meaningless exposition, but instead he gently pushes and guides you towards an end goal that is oftentimes quite opaque. Progression is there and available through various smaller tasks, but huge amounts of freedom are given to the player, allowing you to free roam and explore as you gain confidence. Nightingale doesn't bombard you with continuous map markers or explicit instructions, instead adopting a more organic approach to survival. You see, in the early game, Puck gives you basic tasks, such as to collect sticks and rocks to build a campfire, which is essential for survival, but from there it becomes a game of explore, progress, and achieve. Better blueprints for crafting, more advanced structures to build, more devastating weapons and tools for combat and gathering. It can be yours on both a fast track or a slow burn, which is completely left down to the player's desires. Once you've reached your first realm, you'll be tasked with laying down an estate cairn, claiming a plot of land on which you can begin building your future home. Now, it is within these realms that you will begin to better your character through progression, allowing you to venture into sites of power, many dungeons that are only unlocked when you have achieved the correct power requirements. Throughout the advancement and unlocking of these sites of power, players will earn realm card recipes, which are used in combination to open up new realms. Through the use of realm card recipes, Nightingale is able to greatly extend replayability as it uses a three card recipe system. Biome, major, and minor cards are all blended together to determine the next realm you may enter, with biome cards being the type of realm, such as forest or desert, major cards, which will loosely determine difficulty, and then minor cards, which by the way are optional, and these can affect things such as weather and or animal behaviors. 
Now, if you happen to get it wrong with your first realm recipe, the minor cards can be swapped out once you reach your new realm. This creates a realm that is uniquely yours once entered, and each player will have distinct experiences even when comparing like biomes with other players. This core loop becomes a player's goal and overall progression system within the game. Unlock new card recipes and craft realm cards to travel to more difficult realms, all while becoming strong enough to tackle whatever lies in wait at Nightingale City. Now along the way, you'll also encounter difficult encounters such as the Apex Predator Hunts and Vaults, which are intended to be tackled through multiplayer. Speaking of which, Nightingale allows you to squad up with five of your friends, making a max party of six players. And as long as you set the same respite realm using the estate cairn, you can return to that realm and play regardless of whether or not other party members are online, allowing you to play asynchronously without the need for a third party hosting platform. Throughout your adventures, you'll unlock new crafting and building recipes, allowing you to not only progress your personal character, but also to gradually begin crafting more elaborate structures. And unlocking new realms will allow you to progress those abilities, as each new realm contains vendors with new crafting recipes. And yes, magical enchantments do exist in Nightingale, but not in the traditional use that many games employ. You'll need to collect materials and craft in order to perform magic, but only while wielding a weapon with that enchantment. Infusing your gear and weapons with higher level materials will imbue them with unique passive abilities, such as extra speed or stamina. Players are subjected to slowed speeds due to environmental effects, such as being wet. You can be cold at night or in certain frigid biomes, and there is the ever-present stamina meter that must be constantly monitored. Run out of stamina at the wrong time, and you won't be able to flee or press an attack. Nightingale also makes use of a two-handed character system, with one being dedicated to weaponry, while the other consists of supplies or other crucial pieces. Certain heavier weapons require the use of both hands, while others, like spellcasting, toggles you back and forth. There are also certain utility items, such as an umbrella, which can be used for floating over large distances. Silently gliding in on an enemy position from above while using your umbrella is especially fun, and as you progress further into your adventures, you'll earn better umbrella crafting recipes for greater efficiency. Higher level battles become this visceral wild mix of pressing the attack through various melee weapons or even ballistics, along with strategy and defensive postures. Players can block incoming attacks and even shove back targets to create a bit of space. Defensive spells can be cast to create barriers to allow time to regroup, and of course, offensive AoE spells can be cast for maximum damage. Healing is obtained either through spellcasting or through the consumption of consumables, along with certain short-term buffs. And of course, when all else fails, there's also your handy umbrella that can be used for a swift retreat. As someone that really enjoys a good survival crafting title, Nightingale has taken what can be a standard and sometimes bland and overused formula and turned it on its head. One might think that mashing together a Victorian steampunk landscape with magic, both fantasy and realistic beasts, a floating fae wearing a goat mask along with the use of Stargate portals would be a tough sell. And on paper, it is, but somehow Nightingale combines it together into a cohesive, immersive, survival sandbox experience. Even though I think I was playing on an early build of the game, the Unreal Engine physics and environments were very well done. And besides some general jank with several character movements, overall it was pretty impressive. My only mistake was playing solo, which I do 99% of the time, and the game is completely soloable but something tells me Nightingale would be even more impressive in a full party. 
If you're interested in picking up Nightingale for yourself, it goes on sale February 20th for 30 bucks on both Steam and Epic Store, and I'll include links to both storefronts in the video description. Remember to hit subscribe and ring the notifications bell to receive my latest upload alerts. All my socials can be found in the video description, including Twitter and an open invite to my community Discord server. Thank you so much to the over 193,000 of you that have taken the plunge and 200K is right around the corner. Until the next one, this is Lieutenant Buzz Lightbeer signing off.